All right, what's going on, ladies and gents? Welcome back for another market update. So today was quite eventful, all right? We bounced exactly off my support. I believe I added the support. Uh, it was either this morning or it was last night. I don't think I included it in yesterday's video. Um, but yeah, we do have 293.54 as our exact level that we needed to bounce off of. We need to hold that level or most likely we're going to be going down to fill this gap, all right? We already have a confirmed breakout from this bump and run formation slashes uptrend break. Okay, they both bring two different price targets, which is good for us, okay? You have price target number one, price target number two. This is for profit taken, okay? Um, plus, I mean, just the pattern. Got to put the targets on the board. That's the only way someone is going to be able to control the risk management, okay? If you don't have targets, how do you know when it's risky to hold? Like, literally, like, how do you know when to take your profits if you don't have targets? It makes no sense to, to trade without targets. It does not make sense. Um, but yeah, guys, so we have one target, two target off of the same line, and it's just because they're two different formations. Um, but yeah, guys, so we have that convert breakout. That's what I mentioned in yesterday's video. Uh, guaranteed we're coming back down. But what I did say uh, was possible is that we would come down uh, and maybe come and retest up here, okay? Because we do have this gap. And if we come over to SPY, I believe... No, we don't have that gap. SPY's gap is all the way up here. Um, yeah, okay, two different gaps. And did we fill this gap? Did? Uh, I don't... I feel like we got a few pennies away from it, but we didn't fill it. Um, let me see. Yeah, we didn't fill it. We were a few pennies away. So it's still open. It still remains open. It still acts as a price magnet. We have two upper gaps and we have, do we have two lower ones or do we have one lower one? We have one lower gap, all right? It was not this way for quite some time, all right? But this is pretty fun, guys. This is pretty fun stuff that we got going on. Or not fun, I guess. I guess it's inter I mean, to me, it's fun, okay? Uh, this is all this charting stuff, trading stuff, all of this. I, I have a blast with this, all right? Constantly seeing the improvement each and every day. Like, seeing these videos, like, guys, go back to the original, uh, this original TA style when we started just making these market updates each day. Honestly, I haven't even gone back, but I'm sure if I did, I'd be very amazed. Honestly, I'm going to go back while uh, I'm driving today. I'm going to watch the, uh, I'm going to watch the first video that I have on this channel. And I'm going to see how the TA has improved because I know for a fact it has. Like, we are just getting more and more accurate as we go. Um, and, I mean, we weren't not accurate in the beginning, but, I mean, it's really only getting better. Like, it's kind of crazy. Uh, but, yeah, guys, we have that gap, and most likely we are going to be, now that we bounced off this, most likely we are going to be filling this gap tomorrow. And I don't know if we come up and fill this, but I'm going to say, all right, your oscillators are at extremes, okay? We had the bullish divergence that we called out on the daily CCI on Weeble, okay? We said we weren't taking it too seriously because it's on Weeble and we have been killing it only trading off of TradingView. And look at that. We decided not to trust it. It formed right here. Or actually, it might have been forming right here. I'm not even sure. One of these days. Either way, we went lower. All right, it does look like we completely avoided the three black crows uh, pattern from forming. Okay. If it formed, we would have then needed a confirmation and then boom. Okay. Uh, then it could have been bad and we could have had another bearish target on the board, but luckily we do not have to put another bearish target on the board just yet. Um, but yeah, guys, I do think we're going to be getting our bounce and then I think we're going to be reversing back down. I don't think you were, you were going to have a full cycle back up just like that. Um, and I just say that because look at this. Okay. You have your, uh, your weekly, uh oscillators coming down it doesn't look like that is uh going to be crossing down and i have said before that the weekly stochastic does not really give us fake outs okay we come over here to the vix uh your stochastic doesn't really give you fake outs it does not okay and the same thing is happening for spy and like i said in previous videos even if you do get these little crossy fake outs in the oversold uh, territory down here on the VIX weekly time frame on the CCI and the stochastic, or on the stochastic, by the way, not CCI. Um, even if you get these, I, I mentioned that how they are still going to be tradable. Look at it. You still, like, we got the cross here. This is a massive move, guys. Massive move. You had the next week literally to enter. Let's say we entered on the open of the next week. You still caught a massive move. That is definitely over 100% gains on your VIX contracts, all right? Um, and I understand we were playing date, but I mean, hey, you didn't even have to play that much date uh, as we were, and you still would have caught a sick, nasty move. Like, we could have stick with the, Aug the August 31st contracts that I actually entered the September 6th, I think they were September 16th. I don't know. I don't have them anymore. 
Um, but the reason I entered the September contracts, I, I explained it on the channel, like it was to literally make up for the poor entry on the August 31st contracts. And I told you guys that by August 31st expiration, I expect that I will actually get the expected gain on those August 31st contracts. And I didn't get the expected 100% gain that I entered that trade with a while back. And yes, it was a while back. We definitely, I, I'm not going to say it was a poorly timed trade, but we started entering on the trend line or not on the trend line break on this bounce here. And then if we pull up the 200 MA, it is somewhere over here in this area. And that's where we added more. Uh, but either way, it was a little bit of a sloppier entry, but that's why we grabbed time. Okay, that's why I end up uh, going into the September contracts. I said, hey, by the time this plays out, the September gain will pay for the loss on the August contracts and more. But luckily, by the August 31st expiration, which expired yesterday, it didn't even matter, all right? They were above the entry price on those anyway. So, hey, we ended up killing it, all right? We ended up killing it. But yeah, guys, I do believe we have some pairs pressure stepping on the VIX. Like I said in yesterday's video and the day before that, these two candles right here don't look bullish, all right? They're not bullish. I expect you to uh, most likely be reversing off of these. And maybe you come down and fill this gap. But if you do end up doing that, you are most likely going to push all the way up here and fill that on QQ and SPY along with the other indices. Now, I don't think that's going to be happening, but I do think you are going to cool off on the VIX and you are going to come a little down in your oscillators. I do think you are going to head back up in the uh, sometime in the first two weeks of September. I do expect the uh, month of September to be very bad. Okay, I've told you guys this on the channel. Uh, I see no reason for it to be good. It's literally historically the worst performing month of the year. Why would it not be? Why, why would that trend change during a bear market? Makes no sense for it not to. Okay, dot-com bubble burst. Uh, September 1st, you had your, your peak, and then boom, you started dying after that, all right? I'm expecting a similar thing to happen, except I don't think it's going to be as violent. I think we're going to get a bounce. I don't think you're just going to get the rug pulled at all, but I do believe September is going to be one of those months that uh, we get some really ugly shit like this. I've told you guys here on the channel, like, hey, we could time frame. You got to You need it to get back down here. And it, we are most likely going to be having one more week. Now, look at this. We had four weeks here. All right. I told you guys that I expected this to happen within two to four weeks. We we're going to get that move down and we we're going to reverse up. All right. Now, I don't know if that original projection is going to be happening here on this channel. The reason we make daily updates because TA changes. OK, like straight up. If data changes, you have to change. You're going to get fucked if you don't. It's 100 percent of the time. That is exactly how it's going to happen. If you don't adapt to uh, the scenario in which you're in, okay, conditions change, there you go. You have to adjust your trade, okay, and adjust everything about everything you're doing, all right? Um, but yeah, okay, I mean, when this uh, topping tail happened way up here, we, yeah, we said this was probably going to be a few weeks, and then we were, it was probably going to be a quitty, pretty quick move down. You're going to have a rally back up. Um, and I believe I did say that I am expecting us to either come down to hit these lows, double bottom, or make a higher high. And then we're going to be, uh, breaking past there. That was the original projection, but hey, data has changed. Okay. There is bad stuff going on in the world right now. Taiwan has done something that it has never done shooting down a Chinese plane, or at least firing at the Chinese plane. Um, I'm just saying, guys, like stuff, really bad stuff can happen, okay? And you got the whole NVIDIA thing, like NVIDIA was down, uh, I think it was 10% at lows today. Maybe it's down more, I don't even know. Um, oh, 15, Jesus, I have fallen. Uh, I haven't looked at it in a few hours. That's rough. That is very rough. But the reason that's happening is because the U.S. government decided to take things into their own hands, and they decided to try and uh, punish China, all right? They're trying to... Uh, all right, so NVIDIA sells a lot to China, right? Okay, I think it's 5% of their sales are China, all right? They no longer can sell their semiconductors to China because of China's dominance over the world, the w worldly semiconductor uh, industry, I guess we could call it. I guess, I, I guess that was right. Um, but yeah, okay, the U.S. is looking at China as too powerful, and they're trying to do something about it. And at the same time, they're doing this. Uh, Taiwan and China are just having these tensions. They've been having these tensions for months. I'm just saying, guys, this could be a black swan event, okay? And I don't, I'm not saying the black swan event takes place, but I'm saying it makes sense for it to take place, all right? It is the month of September. Cards do predict the news, 
All right, that's news that we don't currently have, but hey, September is historically the most bearish month of the year. Let's see what happens, okay? So just be careful out there. I don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen, but I will keep you guys updated here on the channel with Daily TA. If things change, things change. But what hasn't changed is when you get these confirmations, okay? We got this confirmation close. Guys, this target is now on the board. This target is now on the board. I don't care what happens. And that's why I was telling you guys data change. Not only that Black Swan event is intro introduced into the mix, we also have, we also have, is the charts changing okay and if the charts changing if the charts predict the news and the charts are confirming a downward target over here way lower like i'm not gonna keep my bullish outlook not a chance okay like there is a bearish target on the board we're coming down here but i also did say that i am expecting us to either go down double bottom or uh make a higher high but also again that was before things had changed uh i think it was in yesterday's video i introduced these targets here i said that we now have patterns on spy and qqq that guaranteed bring us down to these lows all right so i'm just saying once you're down there we're gonna have to see what happens we're gonna have to see if bulls decide to step back in and uh, try and claim that zone but if you melt through it like butter, dude, you're screwed, okay? You're probably going to be going a decent amount lower, all right? You're obviously going to be making a lower low. And then if that happens, I do expect you to push back up, and I do expect you to make the lower high, okay? We definitely didn't get anywhere close to this. This this looks very identical to this. I understand this mountain forms, like, way quicker. But yeah, look, mountain, and then you died, okay? I'm expecting that we're probably going to get a similar situation to this, all right? So... That is pretty much it for today's video. All right, uh, we can quickly comment on Weber. Okay, guys, I told you guys I was going to be going heavier as we fall on this thing, okay? And yesterday's video, right at the very end of the video, I know it was decently long, I put this on a chart, this little zone right here, and I said we are most likely going to be coming down and testing this, okay? And yeah, I, I did exactly what I, uh, I said I'd do, okay? I started loading up on these 750 calls. I averaged down on the $10 calls. I also want to say the reason that this thing is selling off is likely because there is a class action lawsuit from the investors of Weber, which I think is absolutely the most retarded thing possible. Okay, you lost and you were trying to sue the company because you lost money on their equity. This is the this is the mindset of retail. Okay, or there's a lawyer thinking that he can get paid millions of dollars because there are probably a lot of retail investors that got screwed on this play. And yeah. Just look at this. But yeah, I read their uh, prospectus or whatever you want to call it for the class action lawsuit. And it's pretty much just saying like, okay, they diluted their shares and they like, they diluted their shares and they didn't need the money. That's pretty much what they were like. That's what the lawsuit, uh, that's what I got out of it, at least. That's what I thought it was saying. But at the same time, like, how are you even going to look at something like that? Like, dude. Dilution only comes if they have the right to do so. Seriously. Like, you can't dilute your stock without either your shit. Well, no, not at all. Like, it's set in stone. Okay, once dilution is on the table, you can dilute at any point as long as those conditions are met. Okay? Uh, and, it, like, AMC, why do you think they did the ape thing? It's because the, they would have needed retail to vote on dilution. You think they're going to vote on dilution? No. And Weber did the same thing, okay? You don't IPO unless you need money. That's literally what the point of IPOing is, okay? Initial initial public offering. You are looking for spec capital to run your business, okay? Like that's, or you're trying to get rich as fuck. Like, think about it, guys. Like, I, guys, personally, like my dream, okay? My dream for, uh, we'll say, I, I don't know when I developed this. Maybe it was probably over a year ago. Um, Guys, I want, I want a uh, company on the New York Stock Exchange, straight up, straight up. I want to uh, I want to found a company that ends up IPOing on well or some form of getting onto the New York Stock Exchange. That is my end game, all right. And I don't know uh, I don't know how that's going to happen. I'm just going to keep improving my skill set. And there's really nothing else I care about. Okay, like straight up, I have fully acknowledged that I just need to make enough money. And like I mean, happiness isn't a thing after a certain amount of money. And from that point, it's like you are just giving back. You are creating wealth and you are just, yeah, it's literally spreading philanthropy, but you need money to do so. And that's what people don't, like, they call these rich guys fucking greedy. But in reality, you're like, no, their little amount of that they're donating is way more than, like, any of the fucking re retail can do. They don't know how to get that wealth. 
Okay. And then also like, I'm sure a lot of these retailers like, oh, fucking tax, tax them, tax the rich, tax the rich. And when you look at it, like, that's just stupid. Like, that's straight up stupid. Okay. Like in, in reality, like the government takes more from these people because they are uh, the people who can make the money. Okay. Like retail, there's a reason they don't get taxed more because they would die. Okay. They would die because they cannot support themselves in the way that the top 1% can support themselves. Okay. Like you're bringing in like millions and millions of dollars. Like you got there because you know how to do it. But then the people at the government, the people who their jobs is literally to figure out how to spend the taxpayers money. Uh, yeah. Then they want to tell the rich people that they don't deserve to have that money. They need more money taken away from them because it's not fair that they're hogging all the money, even though they, yeah, dude, they acquired the fucking skills. They built up the skill sets to make that money. Like clearly you can see that I, this is a, uh, this is a touchy subject. All right. For myself. All right. Like there is no reason to ever shame someone for making more money. And yet I, I see it. Okay. Like the whole tax system is absolutely ridiculous and I understand it, but like, like what people don't realize is we are in a debt system and the only way to continuously pay for these debt payments, okay? It's never getting paid off, guarantee. Eventually they're going to wipe the debt and that is going to be called the Great Reset, all right? Straight up, that is exactly what is going to be called. There's been, there is a book called The Great Reset, I believe. Uh, I have not read it, but I believe Jay Bravo has mentioned it. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's how that's going to go down. They're going to reset the debt. I mean, there's no, there's no way they can ever pay that off. There is more debt on the U S balance sheet than, uh, is existing in the world. There is no, there's not enough money in the fucking world to pay off the debt. Uh, so like, you know, okay. And the reason, because it is a debt based system. Okay. And new money comes in through credit it is literally how that works. All right. So. I actually don't remember how the fuck I got on that topic because we're sitting here on Weber. I looked at the screen and I just realized I had a brain fart because I don't know how I just started talking about U.S. debt. Oh, taxes and da da da. Oh, fun fact. Warren Buffett's banker owns 89% of Weber. I don't know. Be terrified of that or that's a very good thing. But it's something that everyone entering this place should know. Okay, you should know that at some point in time during this squeeze, whatever the squeeze may be, I don't know. I know AMC was like, uh, like I remember BlackRock and a bunch of institutions were buying that up. And that was a big signal for myself back in May. Um, and yeah, b back in May, I was like, hey, well, like, holy shit, look at, look at this. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it ended up obviously like it was more than just seeing institutions buy. But yeah, you got 90% of this uh, the outstanding shares here is being owned by Warren Buffett's banker, personal banker, and someone else's personal banker. I forgot where I saw that. Um, it was either on Twitter or on Reddit. But uh, yeah, it, the filing came out, and they literally own 89% of Weber. And they can... I, I, don't, I don't know if they caused this. They probably did end up causing this, uh, this sell-off here. And that's just worrisome. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know what the case is going to be with this. I told you guys... In uh, the last two or three videos, uh, when I mentioned Weber, I told you guys, hey, don't use money you need on this play. Like, this is a play. It can be wiped out. I don't think it will be wiped out. Uh, but I do believe we are going to have a sick, nasty squeeze as long as this thing keeps getting attention this month. Okay, going into September 16, you have a lot of options sitting at the 10 strike. I've been taking advantage of this dip. Like, last time we dipped, we went down here, and I understand that is, this was a pretty big... Uh, pretty big drop going from there all the way down there in one day um but like yeah i i do think you are going to be coming back down here i think you're going to come down um obviously i have these marked on my my chart right here and i think you're most likely not going to go there uh but but at the same time i mean i have no idea what's going to happen i just told you guys 90 percent of this company is owned by one one person or one company all right which I, I believe it's a company, but that's that's bad. But that also shows that there's interest. Why would they be owning it unless they are the people continuously selling like 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 the cost of borrow? I think it's around fifty percent. All right, they can continuously sell these shares. Okay, sell them to short sellers, and they continuously rack up those 
lost to borrow, and then they can also sit there selling covered calls. So, I mean, maybe this is just a genius play by Warren Buffett's banker. I have no idea, all right? I have absolutely no idea. I don't know if he plans on just continuously like pumping and dumping this thing over and over to take money from retail. Maybe that's why he owns 90% of the flow. I have no idea, absolutely no idea. So just be cautious when playing this thing. But yeah, that is the deal. And one more thing I want to call out before we leave here is your dollar broke into not all-time highs, but highs that you haven't seen in years and years and years and years, all right? Now, I want to point out something, okay? The dot-com bubble, the dollar destroyed everything. I think that it's, well, I, to I told you guys, uh, we actually talked about uh, how we have this target here on the board uh, for years and years and years away. We think it's going to happen <laughs> somewhere over here. Um, but yeah, I think overall the great reset will be caused by the dollar just absolutely making everything for companies just too expensive. Debt will become too expensive because the dollar will just, you know, I mean, if the dollar goes up here, like you're you're screwed, dude. That's 50% more you have to pay. And we, if we don't have 50% inflation, there you go. All right. You're you, everyone's screwed. So guys, I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.